So yeah, this series still exists. Last time we were here, I tried to fool you guys into thinking anyone could forget Tony Stewart. So now, let's talk about some NASCAR drivers that perhaps you may have actually forgotten. Gary Bradbury Born January 27, 1961 from Chelsea, Alabama, Gary Bradbury's NASCAR career began in 1991 and would last until 2002. And he also had a younger brother that was a NASCAR driver named Charlie Bradbury who unfortunately passed away in 2006 in an automobile accident. Now Gary's NASCAR beginnings came in 1991 when he would begin racing in NASCAR Southeast Series where he would score one win in 1991 and across three full seasons, he would score 16 top fives, 31 top tens, leading a total of 186 laps while finishing 5th, 4th, and 8th in the point standings. During the time that Bradbury was competing in the South Face Series, he began to make a couple of starts in ARCA, and by 1994, he ran a full season in ARCA where he would finish 3rd in the points with 3 wins, 7 top 5s, 9 top 10s, and 4 pole awards along with leading 445 laps. After the 1994 season, he'd only make 7 more starts in ARCA, scoring 2 more top 10s, one of which was also a top 5, and then he would move up into making starts in NASCAR's Top 3 Series, and to make this quick, from 1994, to 2002 in a total of 51 starts in NASCAR's top three series, he never had a single accolading stat. So no top tens, no pole awards, zero laps led, and his average cup series finish was 35th place. In his final race at Michigan in 2002, which was his only start that year, he finished dead last in 43rd after also starting 43rd. For Gary Bradbury, it was just never meant to be in NASCAR's top division. <laughs> Larry Foyt if I asked you who AJ Foyt was, there's a great chance that you would probably know who that is. He's a racing legend across many forms of motorsports, but you may not know too much about Larry Foyt. His full name is Lawrence Joseph Roberts Foyt, and bear with me on this, his relation to AJ Foyt has multiple relations. Larry is the biological grandson, but also adopted son of AJ Foyt, and he's the biological cousin, but also uncle by adoption of AJ Foyt IV. His biological mother, Terry Lynn Foyt, is actually technically his half-sister by adoption, and as for his biological father, Larry Jean Roberts, his biological mother divorced him when Larry Foyt was just an infant. As twisting as his family background reads, it ultimately led him to being within the Foyt family of racing. He would begin his racing career in 1993 by racing go-karts, and he would win his first race in two years after his first race. By 1997, he began competing in USAC's Formula 2000 series, and in 1999, he won two races in the Sports Car Club of America. 2000 would be a big year for him when he began his stock car racing career in ASA, where he would score one top five, four top tens, and one pole award at Winchester Speedway with a total of 50 laps led. He also made one start in ARCA in 2000 where he would only complete 41 laps finishing 35th. He'd also make one other ARCA start in 2005 where he would finish 12th at Daytona after starting 12th as well. It's also worth noting that Larry Foy attempted one cup series start in 2000 in Atlanta but he failed to qualify. In 2001 he began his career in the NASCAR Bush Series driving number 14 Harris Casino Chevy. His only stats for this season was two laps led an average finish of 26th. In fact he only actually had five races finishing in the top 20 and he finished 22nd in point standings. He would go on to run another season in the Bush Series in 2002 where he would score two top fives and finish 20th in the standings with an average finish of 23rd, and he'd only make one other Bush Series start in 2007 where he would finish in 38th place. Then in 2003 with the backing of Harris once again, Larry Foyt was driving for AJ Foyt's number 14 car in the Cup Series for 20 races, but unfortunately his average finish was just 34th, and in 2004 he would only make three races, failing to qualify or withdrawing from another six races as well. He'd also fail to qualify for the 2006 and 2007 day Daytona 500s as well, and that was it for his Cup Series stats. After this, Larry Foyt would also compete in a Truck Series opener at Daytona from 2007 to 2009, and in 2010, he withdrew his entry from the fall truck race at Talladega. Forty's efforts in trucks, his best finish was 18th, and in between the time from Foyt's Cup racing career to his truck races, he actually competed in an Indy 500 from 2004 to 2006, with his best finish being 22nd in 2004. Once it became the best decision to halt his driving career, Larry Foyt continued to focus on the future of AJ Foyt Racing where today he is the president of the company. <laughs> Buckshot Jones Maybe a lot of people heard of this guy at some point just because of the nickname Buckshot, but did you really know much from his career? Well, now we will find out together. 
So his real name is Roy Jones, and he earned a nickname Buckshot at a very young age from his grandfather after he ran into a table and showed zero signs of pain. By the time Buckshot was studying for his business degree at the University of Georgia, he had picked up racing as a hobby. He originally dreamed of being a motocross racer, but his father suggested he try stock cars because they were safer in his eyes. It's funny thinking that stock cars are safer. After only his sixth race, Jones went out to dinner with his father, and then he told him that he wanted to be a NASCAR champion. So, naturally, he and his father sat down and developed a six-year plan that would allow Jones to move up the racing ladder for a chance to fulfill his dream. Spoiler alert, it didn't go so well. By 1995, he would find himself entering his own car in the Bush Series under his team name, Buckshot Racing. His rookie season was less than desirable, having a best finish of ninth. So, the next season, he hired Ricky Pearson, son of David Pearson, to be his crew chief for 1996. And over the next three years, Jones would win two races, score 12 top fives, 25 top tens, and two pole awards. He also amassed such an enthusiastic fan base that he won the Bush Series Most Popular Driver Award in 1998. But, I mean, come on. With a name like Buckshot Jones, who wouldn't like the guy? All in all, when Jones would end his Bush Series career, he ran 147 races of two wins, 13 top fives, 33 top tens, three pole awards, and he led for 588 laps. However, his Cup Series career was never what he had hoped for. His 2001 season was so disappointing that he would even find himself fired halfway through the season from Petty Enterprises. In a total of 56 races in the Cup Series, he only scored one career top 10 and led 21 laps and his average finish was 31st place. Today, Buckshot Jones works in land development and real estate in Gwinnett County, Georgia. <laughs> Steve Kenzer. In racing, there have only been a few people to earn the nickname The King. Richard Petty was NASCAR's king, and in the world of outlaws, Steve Kenzer was the king of sprint cars. From 1978 until all the way to 2014, Steve Kenzer won a total of 580 races with his final win coming in 2014. And during this time period, he won the points championship 20 times, including a stretch of 11 years consecutively that he competed. That is just crazy to think about when you think of anyone else in all of motorsports, no matter what the series may be to have that much dominance for so long. He was such a racing star that he was invited to compete in IROC for seven seasons, and even in this, he won one race in 1994 at Talladega at the age of 40, and he got a total of three top fives and 20 top tens. His career also featured one entry in the 1997 Indianapolis 500 driving for Sendon Racing, where he would finish in 14th place. And before this, he did in fact have a NASCAR career. In 1993, he failed to qualify for the Daytona 500 and the Spring Talladega race, but in 1995, he came back to race in five races for Kenny Bernstein, failing to qualify for another two races. His average finish in NASCAR was 35.2, and that was it for his career in NASCAR. It was very small, but he was a NASCAR driver that you probably forgot about. <laughs> Dan Pardis. Growing up in Port Orange, Florida, which is a suburb of Daytona Beach, Pardis began racing the local tracks in Florida, including New Smyrna Speedway, where he would win back-to-back -back championships in 1980 and 1981. Going from there, Pardis began racing in NASCAR's Touring Series in 1992, where he competed in the Goodies Dash Series, where he raced a Chevrolet Cavalier, and in a Pontiac Grand Am later on. For a majority of his racing career, he competed for the Gardner family-ran team, Jim and Judy Motorsports. By 1997, he began competing in ARCA, and he never ran full time here, but in five seasons, he ran 38 races in ARCA where he would score four top fives, nine top tens, and he led for 61 laps, and his average finish was 19th place. From 2001 to 2003, he competed in 18 Bush Series races, primarily with the Outdoor Channel sponsoring his car, and while he did run 18 races, he did fail to qualify for 11 races as well, and as for his stats, well, there were none. He never led a lap, he never had a top 10, and his average finish was 32nd place and his experience in the Cup Series may have just been worse. He only made one start in 1998 where he finished 36, which came into the 1998 Daytona 500 won by Dale Earnhardt. After that race though, he failed to qualify or just withdrew from 12 races, the last of which was the 2005 Daytona 500, which he withdrew from. All in all, I can see why it would have been so easy to forget about Dan Pardis as his main issue seemed to be making races. And that'll do it for this installment of 5 NASCAR Drivers He Forgot About. Thank you so much for watching. Know any more drivers who should be added into future videos? Leave Leave a comment down below and let me know. I also ask that you please give the video a like, it really does help my channel out a lot. If you're new here or if you just haven't done so already, please go ahead and hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you never miss a new upload. I really do love making these YouTube videos, so I don't want any of you to ever miss out on them. Thank you all again for watching, this is Danny B, and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.